Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with a wild wizard deck that can quickly kick opponents out of games. I know you're thinking Wizard screams mid-ladder, but this deck is played by two professional players at 98 and 119 in the world. They're lighting Top Pro's towers on fire because Wizard's synergy with the deck is incredibly strong. He's fireball bait so the Elixir Collector and Barbarians can flourish and generate positive Elixir trades. When opponents see a vanilla giant with Sparky, they're not too worried about their bait cards because there's no Goblin Giant. So when you suddenly spam a wizard to predict their bait cards, everything will be immediately incinerated, while the giant Sparky stride towards the tower to collect the win. Because of the slow attack speed and the ability to miss of the Executioner, decks that run him need Tornado. And decks that rely on Musketeer or Archer Queen for anti-air need Fireball or Royal Delivery because they don't have splash damage. Since the wizard is a speedy sir with splash damage, he is a one-man army that doesn't need any other support against air decks. Allowing you to optimize your Sparky deck for offense and include other cards like minions to distract Inferno Towers and Inferno Dragons. It's time to rekindle our love for Wizard, set some towers on fire, and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone supporting the channel with credit code SIRTAG. Yo, this guy finished 423 in the world, and I read his name is Tractor. I don't know how that happened, but maybe I'm in a farming type of mood. I'm ready to farm some positive Wizard trades with our giant. Okay, maybe our Wizard, actually. Wait, Wizard's gonna be able to kill everything. Usually Wizard's trash, but today he's taking out the trash, eliminating the bait cards. I'm gonna go for minions off to the right because I wanna be able to protect everything with the wizard. And he's gonna have Mega Knight plus Bomb Tower. What is this madness, dude? Hard counter Royale. I think that because of his clan, he's trying to match a Royal Hogs player and make them tilt it out of their mind to the point that they quit the claim. Because if a Royal Hogs player plays into a Mega Knight Bomb Tower deck, they have to quit the game. There's just like no other option. You just like double tap, swipe up, throw your phone in the trash, and never play again. That's kind of what happens. What would you guys do if you match into this madman when you were running like Rail Hogs or Rail Hogs recruits? Okay, so he's going to snowball on the goblins. The goblins are still going to be able to fight their way through the miner, right? Yeah, that's decent. We're going to take a ton of damage from the bats though. So that's the bad part about the situation. We also haven't cycled our barbarians, which we kind of need to be able to break through our opponent. So I'm going to go and hope that he spams in the right-hand side so we can unleash our barbarians. Otherwise, I think, uh, I think both wall breakers would have connected. So I need to drop our barbs there. Firecracker evolution from our opponent. I should have noticed that. Should have called that out earlier. Not necessarily looking very spicy for us. It's looking pretty bad. Maybe he goes in for a Mega Knight. We'll have to wait and see. I bet you the Firecracker is going to die. If it's like right near the tower, that'd be horrible for him. Okay, he doesn't let it die. I was kind of hoping he would. So we are going to be able to get a free wizard here. It's very nice to do that because that's a King Tower activation and also finishes off the Firecracker, right? Nice. Yeah, it does kill the Firecracker. No minor in cycle means that it's going to be in our best interest to go in for an Elixir Collector, but when we're at 9 Elixir, so we can still defend against whatever he wants to do. Uh, weird bats. Those are bad bats. What is he doing? Okay, he's going to go Goblin Gang counter, right? He's going to have something for that, or is he just going to spam wall breakers directly into us? Yo, that's so good. And we're able to finish off his entire Goblin Gang with the Zap. That's massive value. All right, we're going to go Barbs. I think it's worth it. Even if he Mega Knights, he'll Mega Knight directly into a Sparky. Uh, I think that's fine too. We can go for Harry Potter. Harry Potter's going to vanish the Firecracker. Please, one more shot. No! Okay, I see why you're a top ladder player now, and I don't like it. I really don't like it. Oh my gosh, that was annoying. All right, we're going to go for a zap here, and paired with the Spear Goblins, we might be able to kill the Firecracker. One hit, one hit, one hit. Yes, Spear Goblins. The Spear Gibbies. Okay, one Spear Goblin still left alone. That's good. We can go in for our minions, and then he's going to Mega Knight this. So we need to go for a Sparky in the back and build up a big push again. Just run it back. Yeah, I knew the Mega Knight was going to come down. That's the only sensical play that he could have done. We're going to go in for probably a Giant here so then the Firecracker doesn't hurt us too much. And then I can go for a Wizard directly on top of the Bats if he makes a Bats play on the Giant. Decides not to. Interesting. All right, let's go for Minions here. Wait and see if he wants to do anything. If he goes in for any type of Goblins, we're going to zap him. He just decides us to go, then this is fine for us. Yep, there's the Goblins as expected. We're going to zap. Wizard's going to be able to pop off against the Bats. Yo, come on, Wizard! Let the Sparky connect against a top 400 player. Let's go. I got to be honest with you guys. I did not expect the Wizard to be that good in this matchup. But when you get lucky enough to match into bait, the Wizard eradicates all their distractions and vanishes their chances of winning. And after magically mashing that Mega Knight player, we've popped up to 5,500 in the world. So we got a game against apparently the number one player from Taiwan. What's up, dude? We're dropping a good luck and we're we'll see if you're going to cook with anything crazy. I'm going to go Goblin Gang at the start just because it's a pretty safe bet and allows us to cycle to our Elixir Collector. And I love how the Goblins meander off to the left and still lock under the tower. It's one of the most infuriating and aggravating experiences if you're on the other side. But for us, when it works in our favor, we're just smiling all day. 
Okay, maybe, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. That's not ideal. Did not expect our dude to have arrows with barbarians and minor. Come on, man. Why are you shredding my tower in half? That's not how it's supposed to go at all. All right, I mean, I guess we'll take the silver lining, which is we can Elixir Collector for free because our opponent doesn't have minor in cycle. The bad thing is he's going to have Lava Hound and it's barreling right at us. I guess we have Wizard, so that's one of the best cards to counter Lava Hound in the entire game. Wizard! You're really showing your strength today in this deck. When you don't need a tornado, Wizard can give you a lot of value. So, it's nice. Even if he's going to get poisoned down, we're not going to frown. We're fine with it. We can go in for minions, and they're going to turn into minions on top of the fly machine. And then we could zap if we needed to. Wait, he's overcommitting with a miner. I don't think that's very smart at all. Not only is it going to die to our barbarians, it's going to allow us to cycle the barbarians for only a negative two trade, which we're definitely going to get two elixir from our opponent here. So, it's going to be a positive trade overall. And we're cycling the evolution while going for Elixir Collector because guess what? The dude doesn't have his miner. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. And we bait out the arrows too. We could go in for a giant goblin gang here. Wow, that sounded weird. You know how there's a goblin giant? Well, this is a giant goblin gang. <laughs> oh, that just seems like a filthy mutation, but we like it. We vibe with it. So we can go for a zap to reset the Inferno Dragon right as he thinks he's about to kill the giant. The giant goblin gang perseveres. There's a lot for our homie to fear. All right, we're going to be able to finish off that fly machine. And wow, that giant is putting in giant work. <laughs> no wonder he got his name as giant. Dang, that thing is thick. And we bait out the miner too. Okay, this is actually a better situation for us. Believe it or not, that the tower is still there. Because now the tower won't be able to shoot our giant on the left-hand side. Like the king tower isn't activated. Obviously, I think that it's not like the best thing in the world, but we're trying to take that silver lining as well. Nah, that was, that was me being too positive, I think, in reality. We'd rather have taken the tower because then we wouldn't have had to spend elixir with a zap, right? It's fine, though. It's all good. Or maybe not. Maybe I have to sack uh, the tower on the left. Yeah, I think I have to sack the tower on the left. Let's go in for a zap here, secure the tower guaranteed, go in for our wizard in the back, finish off all the stuff, and then get creative with our counter push. So, he hasn't seen what we really want to do. We're building up the big, tried and true blue Sparky push. I guess it's red for him, but it's blue for us. We see the colors as, you know, on our team, not from our opponents. It's definitely red because, you know, it's, it's funny how the, the colors are reversed. I wish you got to pick your own color in Clash. It'd be awesome. You know, you just pick pink all day, baby. All right, we're gonna go in for Barbarians and go for Giant and then follow through with Goblin Gang because he just used arrows. Wait, the Sparky's gonna shoot the tower. He's not ready. The Giant's gonna lock into the tower too. I think we just win. There's no way. Yo, we're blue, but he's gonna be feeling sad and blue after that one. <laughs> he got beaten to a pulp by that Giant. He probably unlocked a new achievement though because I've never seen a tower be that much of a punching bag. Our Giants deleted all of his health as we continue to make giant strides up the leaderboard to 4,534 in the world. 4534 looks pretty cool. Hey, we got the Little Prince banner from our opponent. You already know that we're ready to ban the Little Prince because we don't even use him. So I'm going to go in for our Sparky in the back. Ideally, we can give value with that. Generally, if our opponent's going to be spamming into us, we want to go and kite his units directly into our Sparky using our giant and then obtain the best value on this planet. The dude is going to have Baby Dragon, so it could be a Sparky type of deck if he's going to be running like something pretty wild like us or he could more likely be running graveyard like everyone in the game and that's exactly what he does right on cue he drops the graveyard he's running little prince version which is no surprise since we saw his banner i could zap on the skeletons but i don't even think that's worth because wizard's going to clean up the majority of them anyway we could zap on top of the little prince but it's going to die as well we could go goblin gang and that is the best worth value <laughs> also one of the weirdest ways of saying something best worth but it allows our wizard to get tanked for it for two shots and we got more value. The price is wrong for our opponent because he is singing a sad song realizing that his elixir all went to waste. Now I can elixir collector in the middle pretty freely. You never want to drop your elixir collector in the back against graveyard. Reason is they can graveyard surround on top of your elixir collector and get insane value. The skeletons are all able to surround the elixir collector and you can't stop it. There's nothing that you can do to defend unless you go like Minion Horde, which will definitely guarantee a poison and a bad trade for you overall. So yeah, never drop your Elixir Collectors in the back against Graveyard unless you absolutely need to. Always drop it in the middle, make them poison, collect your plus one Elixir trade advantage and be pretty happy with that. Also, we can reset his Little Prince with his app, so that's gonna be nice if we want to. I don't necessarily want to right now. I don't think that's worth. I wanna be able to just kill Little Prince with the Sparky and I'm happy with that. 
So, yeah, we'll take that. Sparky's going to die to the baby dragon for sure, but we can maybe go for a wizard. Oh, my gosh. Clutch. Dude, I said for sure, and I did not even account for that possibility. How did the Sparky hit the tower? It's stealing the wizard's magic or something. I don't understand. Also, I'm going to go and do the forbidden play. This is the worst play in the game. Never go Elixir Collector in the back. I did that because I was so excited. I was so happy, but watch what happens. This is what happens when you elixir collect in the back. You lose your elixir collector. And you feel like an idiot because you donate your opponent elixir for no reason. Okay, guys. Sometimes we're, we're going to be bad at the game. Just a little bit, you know? We're going to go for wizard and giant on the left-hand side because we are up a lot of elixir. And I think I can reset his little prince and possibly take his tower. I don't know 100%, but I'm hoping that this works because the wizard should be able to melt most of his stuff. And you reset the little prince with the zap, so then the little prince has to reset its attack animation and do all the work that it did before. But with Nato, he got completely bailed out of that situation. So a really bad Elixir Collector from us put our opponent back in the game when we had it completely wrapped up with that Sparky shot. So now we're struggling a bit. <laughs> it's ideal to go for Evolve Barbarians in the other side when your opponent doesn't end up having a good answer. Because if he's going to poison on top of the Wizard, which is barely outside of the scope of the Tornado and the poison, well, I guess not anymore... Uh, then you're going to get the maximum value, typically. Uh, we're going to zap, so then the baby dragon doesn't kill. Sparky again! Oh my gosh! If we didn't zap with that Sparky, we wouldn't have won the game immediately. It would have been even more sketchy as the game escalated. Because the guy had Evolve Knight and Tombstone to tank, so there was no guarantee that we would have won that. But I should have had that game 100% won if I didn't go for that stupid Elixir Collector in the back. At least we were able to show you guys exactly what not to do while winning, which isn't something that happens often. Usually you take a fat L there. But our Sparky Wizard Magic is only putting W's on the menu today, pushing us to 3,800 in the world. Hey, this guy won the recent 21 challenge. Let's go. So you already know he's going to be pretty good at the game. I definitely want to go Goblin Gang to go and cycle to our Elixir Collector. I could have cycled Minions as well. I just hate cycling my Zap unless I absolutely have to. It's better to cycle a Goblin Gang because it will initiate a response from the opponent. The Zap means that our opponent might spam us with like a Skeleton Barrel or a lot of bait cards and we would only have one small spell. So that'd be pretty horrendous for me. When we see Archer Queen and a Knight, I'm fully expecting our opponent to have a minor Poison deck after seeing the Poison. So generally in this type of environment, it's good for us to go for a wizard and then just giant right in front of that so then we can body block and soak up the damage from the Archer Queen that's bound to go invisible. So I was kind of hoping it would click the invisibility a bit faster than that so then we would just like waste the invisibility, but it is what it is. You still wasted it. You didn't drop it at the last possible second. I'm going to go minions here to test the waters and see if we can get some extra damage. If they float off to the left-hand side and they just skedaddle past the bomb tower, that could give us value. The wizard range though. How did that hit the tower? That was magic for real. Wizard really popping off today. I guess I can go in for Barbarians and try to force out a Poison. It's unlikely that it will work, but maybe he'll go Miner at this exact moment. We'll catch it. Oh, come on. I guess he wasted so much Elixir with the Poison earlier and the Bomb Tower there and Tornado on defense. They didn't have the adequate answers that he needed. All right, you know what? We can go for an Elixir Collector here, and if he goes Miner, we can catch it with a Goblin Gang no matter where he drops it. So I think that's fine for us. Bad thing is I might have to use a Giant on defense. Oh, he's not even going to try to. He's just going to straight up Poison. Huh, interesting. We can just do the exact same play then. We go Wizard, we can go Giant, and soak up the damage, and then go Minions again. Worked out for us really well last time because we scored a Wizard hit. I don't think the same thing's going to happen, but maybe we can continuously get positive Elixir trades the entire time. Forcing out Poisons in the wrong tower where he's not able to accumulate damage is going to be beneficial for us in the long run. We go for our Minions here, and we've got our Evolve Barbs now. I wonder if he's going to Tornado. He probably does. So last time it didn't work so well for him, but maybe he's going to hit the timing this time. Minions are in a lock on a tower. Yo, Wizard Part 2! No way! <laughs> if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's the motto of the story here, guys. It's working so well. Wizard, minions, plus giant push when our opponent has to poison on the elixir collector. Must be frustrating for him. So if you guys are unaware of this interaction, you want to use Evo Barbs against the graveyard because they start to ramp up their attack speed, so then they defend the graveyard skeletons a lot easier. Regular barbarians, they are ridiculously sad into graveyard. It does not work well. Also, since this guy is going to be playing a bit differently, he's not going to have the tombstone version of graveyard. It is a weirder matchup for me, for sure. I'm going to try to go for minions here with our wizard, and I don't know if we can kill the goblins, but I'm hoping if we zap, please. Oh, it didn't work, but the wizard's still alive, and so are the minions and the spear goblin. It's basically a goblin giant, guys, but the goblin is on the ground. And same with this tower. It fell to pieces, and now it's shattered all over the ground, too. We're going to go and defend this graveyard. He's going to drop a graveyard at the river. We're going to body block whatever he tries to cross the river with with barbarians, and he's dead. Oh, he's not going to try. He's left. Nope, he's trying. Okay, well, you stopped the knight from crossing the river. Notice how the princess tower is targeting the graveyard skeletons. That is integral for defense. 
if the Prince's Tower is targeting the Knight, then all the Graveyard Skeletons are going to accumulate on your tower and you're going to take tons of damage. Since we don't have Poison for an incredibly easy defense against Graveyard, and our opponent has Poison for our bait cards, we always have to stop their tank from crossing the river. And if you do that correctly, you'll always be able to X out a win in your favor. And we've wandered all the way up past 2,000 medals to 2,500 in the world. Yo, this guy finished top 600 in the world. Beta, go. Well, dude, we're alpha and we're dropping our stuff as fast as possible. I feel like anyone that says that they're alpha is never alpha, so I take that back. <laughs> we're going to be going in for our Barbarians or Sparky in the back right in the night. Is this another Graveyard player? That would be so incredibly unrealistic to play against Graveyard all day today. Are we the Graveyard Magnet? We might be. Who knows? I know that we're going to be able to kill that knight, so we're in a decent spot. I mean, Graveyard is starting to become stronger because there are pro players using Cannoneer at top ladder, so Graveyard does counter the Cannoneer, and it does kind of make sense. All right, well, at least we're going to be able to destroy his little prince here. And maybe he's running something else. What if he's running Minor Poison? <laughs> maybe. Oh, he's running something else. Let's go. Variety. The Spice of Life Clash Rale. I've never been excited to play against Goblin Giant before, but here I am. I, I guess uh, after playing against Graveyard that many times, it changes a man. It changes a man. Okay, this is decent. I think we just, you know, chill and then zap on top of his Sparky and then kill his Sparky with our Sparky. You're not ready! Yo, that two elixir investment just tarnished our opponent's chances of defending. And look at that. It devoured a knight too. Get that thing out of my sight. He's sitting there astonished. And I am too because I can't believe he just let that happen. That two elixir just ended my man. Ended him. That was way too much fun, and that's why you run and zap with this deck against Mighty Miner, Inferno Dragon, Sparky. It comes up clutch more than any other card in the game. Okay, I bet you he's got Lightning after seeing the Hunter. Didn't expect that, so I just passed all of the Elixir back to our opponent. He has Lightning, he's going to take it, he's going to crush our Sparky, and I'm going to go Giant here so he's not able to go and hit the Sparky with the Hunter and finish it off. Wait, did he not Lightning? What is this Wild Child doing? Okay, we can soak up a Sparky shot because it's not going to be able to last and blast our Giant. So it's not going to blast our giant and our Sparky at the same time. Wait, he loses the Sparky again. No way. I'm pretty sure Sparky players don't know how to defend against Sparky because they're always on offense. So they've never understood or added the skill set of defense to their arsenal. As epitomized by this guy, if you play against another Sparky player and you have Zap, it looks like you just beat them down and three crown them easily. And this guy was at the top of the world too. I mean, we're sitting here at 2,100 in the world and we three crowned him in a second. And that's a true testament to the pure power of Sparky Giant Wizard. If the opponent makes one mistake, they vanish instantly. Like if you enjoyed today's wizard magic, subscribe for more daily videos and have an amazing rest of your day.